Hey guys, and welcome to this episode of the Happy Knitting Podcast. My name is Julia, and I'm coming to you as always from the south of Germany. Today is Sunday, the 3rd of May 2020, which is crazy. How did it suddenly become May? I have no idea. But I am so happy that you're joining me today to talk about some yarn, some knitting, some crochet, um, some baby works in progress, and yeah, we'll just see how it goes. So thank you if you're watching for the very first time. I really, really hope that you will enjoy this podcast. And if you're coming back, thank you so much for being a regular viewer of the podcast. Um, where should we start? Maybe first up, I wanted to thank all of you who commented on last week's special episode. I did a episode on knitting needles and a tiny bit on crochet hooks as well. And I was quite nervous about that and everything went wrong when recording it, but you guys received it so well. And that was really fun to watch because, um, I mean, I do these special episodes every now and then and kind of see how it goes, but it seemed like that was a topic that interested a lot of people. So thank you so much. I've gotten a lot of um, ideas for future tools as well. So I may be trying out some of your suggestions and I just wanted to say thank you for that. So my voice is already going funny after like a minute of recording, which is not a good sign. But today we have a pretty full packed episode. I have a couple of finished objects. I have some works in progress. Um, I think we'll start with um, some tiny baby finished objects, but I'll just mention those very quickly. So I have a knit another pair of baby spiral socks. If you don't know um, spiral socks, you can wear them without a heel. They are um, spiral socks for adults as well. But I just thought they make a lot of sense for babies because then they just don't grow out of them as quickly. And so I made another pair. I talked about them at length a couple of episodes ago and I have made a Ravelry page for all of my spiral socks where I kind of have just very simply um, explained how I make them. So if you're interested, just look them up. There are a couple of patterns on the internet, Ravelry and such as well. I'm just kind of using what works for me. So I'm not really using one pattern, but anyway, so they are done. Um, they are out of a mini skein that I found when I was looking through my mini skeins last week. And I really like it. I only had like 15 grams of this yarn. I have no idea what it is. So if you gave it to me, please do let me know because I would be really interested. It's a really pretty yarn. But anyways, they're done, they're adorable, they will go in the baby's box and most likely move very soon. Um, I also made some more leftover projects. So you may remember that I crocheted a C2C moss stitch blanket quite recently. Um, and I made the mistake of measuring how many grams of yarn I actually used for the blanket versus how much I have left. And it turns out, I think I've only used like 250 grams of cotton in total for the blanket and I have 800 grams of cotton left. And I was like, oh my goodness, what am I going to do with all this cotton? Because I was kind of, I mean, I liked it and liked the color palette, but I don't want to make three more blankets. So in a first attempt, I decided to hold it double and make some pot holders slash washcloths slash whatever you want these to be. Um, so I held a double, did like a half double crochet or a half treble crochet, depending on what terminology you use on, I think a five millimeter crochet hook, just attached like a little handle. And this I think used about 25 grams. <laughs> so I realized I don't want to make a million of these. I mean, I ha I'm glad I have this. I thought I might use this actually as like a washcloth for baby. But since I have recently um, had to sort out a couple of our pot holders that we already have, we have some that my great grandma who hasn't been with us for a long time, she crocheted them. But some of them, they just reached their end. So we need some more pot holders in the kitchen. So I think this is just going to go in the kitchen and I can always make more because God knows I have enough yarn. So I made that. And then for like a more proper finished object, 
I also finished Kai's socks. So these are Kai's pandemic socks. Um, pandemic is a colorway by Das Mondschaf. I don't have the tag with me right now, but it's her sort of coronavirus colorway, which um, it just made sense for me to get them since Kai's work has been related to the coronavirus and who doesn't need pandemic socks. So I knit these two at a time, cuff down, I did 68 stitches, I did my garter stitch short row heel, I did the fish lips kiss heel in garter stitch and they're done and Kai has been so eager to wear these so he's basically waiting for me to finish this podcast so he can finally put these on his feet and yeah I think they came out really fun I, I know that one of them, this one is much brighter than this one which I just think is very fun and I mean their pandemic sucks so I think they're really cool. So let's talk about some works in progress. So should we maybe stick to crochet since we already kind of started there? I mentioned that I had all this yarn left, this cotton from the blanket and I wasn't going to knit like a hundred or crochet a hundred pot holders or washcloths either. So I decided to give the Battenberg blanket or blanket of calm another shot. Um, so you may remember I very briefly mentioned that last week I tried the um, crocheting one of those Battenberg or Blanket of Calm squares. Both of these are free patterns by the way. And I didn't really like it but I already had a feeling that when I didn't like it it wasn't because I didn't enjoy making those squares but because I wasn't enjoying the yarn with the squares. So lo and behold I tried it with this cotton. This is 100% cotton from Hobby. Hobby is spelled with double B, double I. And I really like it. It was really just a matter of the yarn. So I have kind of been obsessively crocheting a bunch of these squares. And you will realize these are the colors that I used for my previous baby blanket. So it wasn't really my plan to make two blankets in the same sort of color scheme, but it just seems to be happening. and. This is a very, you know, affordable yarn that you can basically get in a million colors. So I'm thinking I'll, you know, crochet through these sort of shades for now. And then if I get really sick of it, I mean, I could order like a yellow, I could make it a rainbow blanket. I could add some more colors to it and make it a little bit different. But yeah, I've been, I think I have like 10 or 12 of these squares flying around my place right now. And they're just really fun to make. Um, again, I feel like my crochet skills are definitely getting better, which is a good thing. And it's nice to have these sort of portable projects because, you know, I can just, you know, have a crochet hook and one of my crochet cotton balls lying next to my bed. And then when you're watching something, whatever, you can just pick it up, make, make a square or two very quickly. And yeah, so I've been doing that. I have also, last Saturday I was so obsessed with crochet. I did like a, I think I named it Corona Crochet Saturday. So if you want to join in that, feel free. Um, I spent my entire day crocheting. So I've also spent a lot of time working on my rainbow blanket that I talked about last week. So last week I had just casters on and I had, I think like this much maybe done. And I have been working on it. And you guys, I am here. Isn't this cute? So this is another crochet blanket project. I know, I'm sorry. I never thought I would be the one showing crochet on the podcast, but here we are. And I know that a lot of my viewers are crocheters and I feel like crochet generally gets a bad rep. So here we go. So this is um, basically what Tannis of Tannis Fiber Arts did and I'm just shamelessly copying her. Sorry Tannis. Um, it's a double crochet, no it's a half double crochet blanket which is also a half treble crochet blanket. And I'm just going back and forth. I started with 170 stitches. But um, it took me a while to figure out that the tutorial I was using to create straight edges was absolute rubbish and didn't give me straight edges, instead it increased. So by the time I realized that, I think now I'm closer to, I don't know, 176, maybe 180 stitches. But now, thankfully, I am not increasing anymore. 
and I decided that in the big picture it doesn't really matter. I mean, this blanket may be wider than it is tall, but who cares? It's a blanket. It's quite big. Um, this was going to be a baby blanket. I think it's going to be a lap size blanket for sure. But I'm really, really enjoying it. Um, I'm just basically using all of these mini skeins. I got a set from Schreepjes um, and it's a mix of their river washed and their stone washed yarn. So it comes in these little balls. I think I have 58 of these 10 gram balls. And I just put them in a rainbow order and now I'm just, you know, using one and then the next one and it just keeps going and it's very, very mindless and I'm enjoying it a lot. I am using a three millimeter hook, which it is giving me a pretty tight fabric. Um, probably I could have gone up to a 3.5, but now I'm just going with it and I really like it. So now let's move on to some actual knitting projects. So I have so many new things to show you, but I'll show you the one that you've seen before first. So in here I have my Curiosity and Opportunity socks, which is a pattern by Hohi Locatelli. And it is a cable sock. It's hard to show without a sock blocker, but last time I showed it to you, I was working down the leg and I have finished the leg of the first sock. And I have put in a heel. I didn't go with the heel that was in the pattern. I just did my normal fish lips kiss heel, which you can see here. And now I am working down the foot of the sock. And yeah, I'm really quite enjoying it still. It is going much faster now that I'm on the foot because I don't have to do this texture pattern all over the back of the sock. And also the cable is just becoming a bit more intuitive. I also decreased stitches for the foot. So I think I had, I think I had 36 stitches per needle. So 72 stitches all together. And because I know from a friend that she said her socks were kind of big with this yarn and also because I'm just generally afraid that they will be a little bit too big because you have a bigger stitch count because of course the cable does draw it in a little bit. I have since gone down um, on the foot. So I have 36 stitches still for the cable motif, but I decreased to I think 32 stitches for the bottom of the foot. So it's all a bit trial and error, but I have tried these on and they fit quite nicely. So yeah, here we are with the sock, nothing too, too exciting to write home about, but I am still working on it every now and then and quite enjoying it. And the yarn that I am using once again is Regia Premium in their silk sock yarn. So this is a 55% Merino, 25% polyamide um, and 20% Hang on, that doesn't make sense. Oh yeah, it does make sense. 20% silk. And so far I really quite like it. Um, I think the color is called Salmon, even though on the thing here it just says color 32. Now, let's talk about some of the many new things that I have started. Um, you guys will be surprised. So, I had all these projects and you know I should be working on my No Frills cardigan, but I didn't want to work on it. So instead, I had this idea in my mind that I really need to make a steeped cardigan because I just really, I didn't even want to work on color work. I just really wanted to work stockinette with a rustic yarn and steek it. And cardigans would be something that would be very handy to have right now and for the future. So I had kind of been thought, thinking about it for a while and in the end, I decided to just cast on. So the yarn that I decided to use, I wanted to use a yarn that was already in balls because I couldn't be bothered caking it up. And this yarn is Rauma Finogarn. This is one of their newer colorways that has a sort of heathered look. So I think it is dyed on their gray base. They came out with this um, last year around the Oslo Stricker Festival. So I picked this up in Oslo and I love it. I love this color. And I realized the light is kind of coming and going. There is nothing I can do about that. Sadly, I don't control the sunshine. But yeah, this is colorway number 4124. 
and I think this is only the fourth batch so this was quite new when I got it and I decided after having a look through all of the, my patterns that I already had on Ravelry I decided to re-knit a garment that I already made quite a while ago which is the Branches and Buds sweater by Carrie Bostic Hogue. So the first Branches and Buds that I did, um, I think that was one of my very, very first color work sweaters that I've ever knit. It's a very, very simple color work. I really enjoyed it back then. And back then I made it with a very light yarn. So it was this sort of summery sweater. I wear it all the time. It's one of my most worn garments that I wear year round. It's more like a light top. It is super light and I love it. And for, so this time I decided to go with a much heavier sort of wintry yarn, non superwash woolen spun yarn, and I am sticking it. So if you don't know what sticking is, it means you knit something in the round and then you will, I will cut it open, attach some button bands and turn it into a cardigan, which is really fun by the way. If you have never done it, I would recommend it, especially with a yarn that is non-superwash, woolen spun. So this stuff is basically made for sneaking. So what do we have here? Well, it's kind of hard to show and there are, I think, two balls of yarn attached to it. But we have a cardigan that is only four, four inches short of being done with the body. And we have three quarters of a sleeve. So yeah, I, I just sped through this. I was having so much fun with this. Um, I had a couple of days last week when I was suffering from quite bad headaches. So basically all I did was just work, stocking it in the round. And once you get past the color work, it is very simple, of course. Um, I had some issues with the fit of this. Um, so I followed the pattern, realized already when following the instructions that yeah, the yoke depth is very, very narrow, but I thought it would be fine. So I split for the sleeves. I had, I think, at least four inches done on the body when I tried it on and it just didn't fit right. And at first I thought my gauge was off and maybe the yoke itself was too tight. But luckily I realized that it wasn't the gauge, it wasn't the yoke, but the fact that the yoke was just not deep enough. So very, very sadly and reluctantly, I picked up the stitches again, went back to before I had split for the sleeves. I think I added like, I don't know, two or three centimeters, probably three centimeters. And I also cast on a couple more stitches for the underarms and then split for the sleeves again. And now this is going to fit like a dream. I really am so happy with it now. It was the first time in a while that I did like a bigger sort of sweater surgery, but I'm really happy that I did. It would have fit otherwise as well, but it just, I think it would have never been 100% right. So I'm very happy that I went back. And again, I've knit this pattern before and I didn't have this issue. I think it's also a lot to do with your personal taste. I like to have some space around my shoulders. So I am happy with it now. I did a couple more um, changes, so I think, I'm not sure, I think it didn't come with a 2x2 two two rib, but I decided to go with one. There's also like a little pearl ridge that I didn't do. Obviously I am sticking it, so I added some stick stitches. I also added short rows after the color work, because I want the neck to be quite high. And this didn't come with any short rows, which again is fine. If you're looking for like a beginner friendly color work sweater, I think this is a really good one because it is quite simple. But yeah, I just added in some short rows, I added in some shaping and for the sleeves, I decreased quite quickly as you can see here. So I have lots of space around my shoulders, but I have tight sleeves, which is what I usually like. So yeah, that is my branches and buds cardigan and if you're wondering why am I playing this weird sort of knitting two places at the same time and kind of playing yarn chicken game well theoretically I wouldn't have to play yarn chicken because I have enough for the sweater but look at what I also had to cast on because I just couldn't stop myself ah. 
I had to cast on a baby branches and buds. <laughs> I know I'm such a sucker. Um, but I just, I was knitting on this and I was thinking, oh my God, this would be so adorable and so easy to make as a baby version. <laughs> and so I did. So for this, I used the chariot of the branches and buds, but I made it a little bit shorter because Obviously, on a tiny newborn sweater yoke, you just don't have enough space between the increases. And I am using, once again, Tin Can Knits Strange Brew Sweater Recipe um, to make a tiny cardigan version. <laughs> I know, I, I don't know, I, I just think this is adorable. So I am, again, basically doing the same thing, except I'm following the increases and everything of the Tin Can Knits pattern. I threw in the branches and buds color work right here. I only did one motif. And again, it has a stick, so this will also turn into a cardigan. And I mean, how adorable is this? So this is why I'm playing yarn chicken, because I had yarn for one sweater, not for a sweater and a matching baby sweater. So what I've decided to do is, I have just split for the sleeves on this, so I want to do the majority of this cardigan first to see if uh, how I go with yarn. So far I'm going quite well, so I think I may be able to finish both as I have planned. And if it turns out that I do run out of yarn, I can always, um, of course, make contrasting like cuffs and ribbing and even like the color I could make with a lighter color. It's just that in an ideal world I would like both of these sweaters to only have this light color in the yoke and nowhere else. But I know that I can improvise and at least for the baby sweater do some contrasting elements if I need to. So it's no, it's no trouble really. I just want to see how far I can go with the yarn and it's going to be adorable. I feel like I am really getting into making baby things now. In the beginning I wasn't and I think part of it was that I felt like I had to follow all these patterns and now I realize that I can basically knit whatever the heck I want because, you know, it's knitting. It's just a piece of string and you can make whatever you want with it. So I am having much more fun making baby things lately. And yeah, so there we go, matching branches and buds cardigans. I'm also really excited about the sneaking because I love sneaking. I love cutting my knitting and I haven't done it in a while. So now I get to do it twice. For both of these, by the way, I'm using the same needle size. I am using three millimeter needles. So those are my branches and buds cardigans. So you would think I have a lot of projects on my needles. I'm really enjoying them and I should be happy with that, right? But yesterday I had to very, very suddenly jump on another bandwagon and one that is very untypical for me. So you may know that generally I love knitting a lot of socks and I knit a lot of plain vanilla stockinette socks. And the fact that I'm knitting a cabled pattern right now the Curiosity and Opportunity socks is already quite unusual for me. So what would be more unusual than that? Well, I jumped into a three month um, color work sock club, which that just happened on a whim. So some of you may know um, the German designer Ducati. And again, everything, it will all be in the show notes in my project pages. But she does a lot of all over beautiful color work socks. And I know that a lot of people, especially in like the German knitting community are knitting those and they always look amazing and I never join in. So she came up with this club, which is called the Power Flower Club. And I think it's a three month club. So the first pattern dropped yesterday and it is called Power Flower May. And then there will be two more patterns in June and July. And I decided to jump on it. So I purchased the pattern, I purchased the entire club, which wasn't that expensive, I'll be honest. And um, went into my stash and picked some yarn and went ahead. So the yarn that I chose for my Power Flower May socks 
is this yarn that I think my friend Marion gave to me for my birthday last year, so pretty much exactly a year ago. And this is also the yarn. This is Exmoor Sock Yarn by John Arbin. So it's a really interesting yarn and it's been kind of waiting for its project for a while. It's a blend of Exmoor Blueface, Quarriedale Wattles and Nylon Sock Yarn. And so I had these two colors in my stash and I thought they would be perfect for the sock. So I cast on the sock and it's kind of looking messy because I dropped a stitch, but I will explain in a second. So I cast this on and I knit the ribbing and I started the color work and I didn't like it. The pattern is beautiful, but my gauge wasn't feeling right. It was too loose and Obviously you don't want your socks to be tight when you're doing color work because then they won't fit over your foot, but it wasn't really working out. And while I really enjoyed this yarn, it's a very rustic yarn. It's kind of a very thin yarn as well. So I just, I just felt like I wanted something plumper. So I actually just um, took this off the needles. I blocked it to see how it would maybe bloom after washing and while it has gotten nicer. And while I do like the yarn, I just realized that I didn't want to use this yarn for this particular project. So the only reason I haven't frogged this yet is because I wanted to show it to you, but I'm going to rip this out and put the yarn back in stash and it will find a different use. But what I did do is I then cast on using another yarn. So the pattern is actually written like to be knit with superwash, indie dyed yarn and while I didn't really have any yarn in stash that would work for that I did decide to go with a superwash yarn which is usually not my choice for color work but this yarn is a commercial superwash yarn sock yarn that is very squishy and I just wanted something that was more plump more squishy and this kind of fit the bill so this is yarn that I got quite recently you may remember it this is Yavol Le Pai Lang yarn so these are 50, uh, 50 gram sock yarn balls that they come in a million colors. Um, I'm using color possibly 2035 and 912. Why they never give things names, I have no idea. But I just grabbed these two from my stash and I cast on again. And it doesn't have a ton of contrast but in terms of the fabric that I'm getting I am really enjoying it so much more. So I thought about going down a needle size but in the end I didn't so I'm still knitting this on my 2.5 millimeter US size one and a half but this is turning out much nicer and this hasn't even been blocked yet so once it's been blocked I think it's going to be a really nice sock. It fits over my foot but it's just a bit smaller than the previous version so I think this is going to be my way forward from here. In terms of um, changes to the pattern, I couldn't help myself. The pattern has a really, really beautiful rib technique, but it had a lot of like knitting through the back loop and while it looks beautiful and I want to do that for another sock, I just didn't feel like doing it on this sock because I really just wanted to get to the color work. And mind you, I did this twice. So. Instead of casting on with the bigger amount of stitches that you need for the color work, what I did is I cast on my usual 64 stitches, did a two by two rib, and then after that, I just did a round of stockinette in which I increased for the number of stitches needed for the color work. So this way my ribbing is a little bit tighter and yet my color work is wide enough that I can fit my foot through. So yeah, this is where we are with that. I'm really happy with it. I think I'm about three quarters down the leg. And then this is really interesting because it doesn't only have color work on both sides, obviously of the sock, but it also has a heel that incorporates color work and it looks really interesting. And you know what? I'm, I think I'm going to follow the pattern and actually do what it tells me. So it has a different pattern also for the bottom of the feet and it looks absolutely beautiful. So this is what I'm doing now. Again, very sudden, definitely sort of like a cast on on a whim, but I'm really enjoying it. And again, I'm definitely 
learning new skills. I feel like my color work on socks has definitely improved. Um, my tensioning is getting a little bit better and I'm just enjoying it a lot. So that is the last thing that I'm actively working on right now. So my goal for next week, I have so many goals. I would like until next week to finish my sweater, my branches and buds cardigan. I would like to definitely have finished my first cable socks. And ideally, in an ideal world, I would also like to have finished my first colorwork power flower club sock. So that's kind of what I'm thinking. Who knows if it'll happen, but that is where we are. So that is it for what I've been working on this week. And my voice is once again going and I just shook the camera. I mean, this is just going really well. Mind you, I haven't had any coffee today. Um, in terms of acquisitions, I had some acquisitions, but then some things went kind of wrong and I'm kind of sussing it out now, so let's not talk about that. So the only thing that I have to show you here today is just a quick follow-up to my needles episode. So I got myself some more crochet hooks. These are the Knit Pro Waves because I realized that I quite like them and they're very, very affordable. I got my first of those just because I wanted to get whatever was the cheapest crochet hook for my blanket. But I really like them, so I got some Nitro Waves in 4mm and 4.5mm. Um, which has me a little bit confused now that I'm thinking about it, because I'm pretty sure I ordered a 3.5 because that is what I needed. So I will have to look that up and see if again something went wrong or if I just ordered the wrong thing. I'm just realizing this now as I'm talking to you, so who knows. But these arrived today um, and that is pretty much it in terms of knitting and crochet content for this show today. So I think I'm just going to let you guys go because really there isn't that much interesting going on to tell you about. Um, I will be back with a not, I will be back with another regular episode next weekend and I have some idea maybe for something in between so we will see how that goes and if that happens. Again, I'm just not putting too much pressure on myself these days. If I find the time and I feel like recording, I will and if I don't then I'm not going to beat myself up about it. But I am so happy that you joined me today. I really hope that you have enjoyed this show. And I hope you have a lovely, crafty, nitty Sunday weekend and start of your week tomorrow. So until I see you again, thank you again so much. Happy knitting, happy crafting. Bye.